Here we have ginkgo. It's in the family Ginkgoaceae, the genus Ginkgo, and the specific epithet is biloba. So the entire species is Ginkgo biloba. This is really a remarkable species for multiple reasons. But one is that it is the only living species all the way up through phylum. It's monophyletic. That means that it's been around for a very long time and has outlived most all of its pests and pathogens. Classified often as a native to China, but it's been around for maybe 200 to 250 million years, and it was really, it really at one point had a worldwide distribution. Now clearly the world has changed quite a bit in 250 million years, and this tree was rediscovered uh, in China, and now has been propagated and moved all over the world and is commonly planted. This tree has both a male and a female tree, so it is dioecious. The female tree produces a small, uh, about this size, fruit, starts green, and then turns into sort of a bright orange color. And it stinks. When the fruit is crushed, it smells a bit like vomit. So many people do not prefer to have female trees planted. Let's take a closer look at some of its other identifying characteristics. The bark on ginkgo is an ashen gray. When it's young, it's fairly smooth, but a very white gray. And you can see that it starts to, as it ages, develop into these plates. And the plates are a little bit, they have a little extra subrin or cork in it, and so they do tend to be a little soft or squishy. The plates interlace, and we don't get incredibly deep furrows, but there is quite a bit of texture. The name ginkgo biloba is attributed to the leaf, which can have two lobes. It's also a fan-shaped leaf, very distinct. Not all of the leaves have the two lobes. It's not uncommon to see a single-lobed leaf. This is also referred to as maiden hair, and I think that has to do with the veination pattern. Very fine veins that come down and flow out like a maiden's hair. The leaf has sort of a silky texture to it, but really that shape is going to be the most identifying characteristic. The leaves are arranged alternately, particularly on the new growth. We can see a single leaf coming out and a bud at the base. Looking at an older twig, you can see that they develop these we call spur shoots. And on the spur shoot, you'll have almost a whirl of leaves, but the spur shoots themselves, which is where the bud tissue is contained, are alternately arranged. So this is still alternately arranged. Right here is a spur shoot that is several years old, and they develop and looks like almost a peg that's coming off. This can give the branches a very unique look, especially when all of the leaves have fallen off and it almost looks to me like little twinkle lights that are wrapped around each of the twigs. Here's a twig still attached to the branch. You can start to see the clusters of leaves at each of the spur shoot as it moves up. Notice also that there are not a lot of small twigs, so the leaves really come and sprout right off the branch, giving it a unique textural appearance. In the fall, these leaves turn a bright golden yellow, and they'll typically fall off all within a day or two of each other. To give a sense of form, ginkgos can be a fairly large tree, although most in the landscape are fairly recent and haven't reached their full potential. Typically a single trunk that doesn't start to really branch out or fork until much higher in the canopy. And you can see, I think, the way the branches are and how tight the leaves are held to the branch, that it gives a unique appearance to the ginkgo.